the, uh, really the birth of the church. I mean, the Holy Spirit came amongst the uh, disciples and uh, really at that point turned them into what they call the apostles now. And the apostles, it comes from the Greek word apostolos, which means messenger, bring the message of God. And that's what we're, we are all called to do too. Yeah, there you go, sermon before the sermon. Okay, let's go to the announcements. <laughs> Uh, we have a set up down in the table downstairs and by the information table for uh, Beacon House. You still need some help there with uh, some of the meals, not only serving, but also with uh, their overnight stay and also the, the meals themselves, main dishes, desserts, that type of thing. So, take a look at that down there and uh, see if you can help us out with those dates for uh, helping the Beacon House with uh, people who are in need of meals if you supply that for them. On the we also have an announcement for, we would like to update our member directory. And so if you happen to have moved in the last year, or changed email addresses or phone numbers, whether it's cell phone, home phone, or whatever, contact Mary Ann so that we can get that updated in our contact list. So we don't call, try to call you for whatever reason, we have a you have to reach for wrong. So if you happen to have changed anything in the last year, talk okay, not to but your any numbers, contact numbers or such, then contact Maria. Uh, the only other announcement I have is that uh, we have a our Sunday school presentation, which is not on our bulletin for today, but we're going to have a little bit of a presentation by the kids right after we sing our first hymn. So, we want to be around that. Uh, in that mode at this point, let's go ahead and rise as you are in and we'll sing our first hymn, which is Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness, to the blue hymnal, number 684.
But this is in honor of my um, old Conway director, Jean Rose Rasmussen of Sebertson. And I found it, and we're going to sing it. Come on, kids.
and of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Stone and tar for mortar. 
Then they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens, so that we may make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. And the Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language, they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. Here ends the reading of the first lesson. Our song today is 143, and I will start reading and you can follow. <clears throat> Lord, hear my prayer, and in your faithfulness, heed my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for in your sight shall no one living be justified. For my enemy has sought my life, he has crushed me to the ground. He has made me live in dark places like those who are long dead. My spirit faints within me. My heart within me is desolate. I remember the time past. I muse upon all your deeds. I consider the works of all your hands. I spread out my hands to you. My soul gasps to you like thirsty land. Oh Lord, make haste to answer me. My spirit fails me. Do not hide my, your face from me, or I shall be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear your loving kindness in the morning, for I put my trust in you. Show me the road that I must walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord, for I flee to you for refuge. You teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on the ground. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake, for your righteousness' sake, bring me out of trouble. Allow your goodness to destroy my enemies and bring all my foes to naught, for truly I am your servant. Our second reading this morning is from Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Corinthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans, and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, They've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. 
Your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Here ends the reading of the second lesson. Please rise for the gospel as you are able.
Today is Pentecost Sunday. When we celebrate the coming of God's Holy Spirit into the lives of men and women, which is the birthday of the Christian church. Today is just as important as Christmas and just as important as Easter. Yet this festival, this holiday in the church, goes by almost unnoticed. Why is that? Maybe because we have a difficult time getting a handle on the Spirit of God. Maybe we don't understand what exactly happened on that day. And maybe talk about the Holy Spirit is not so sweet as talk about a baby born in a manger or gifts being passed about or coloring eggs and chocolate bunnies. Maybe Pentecost doesn't get so much attention because we've not found a way to commercialize it. We haven't found a way to turn Pentecost into a culture extravaganza or into a national holiday. So it goes unnoticed. Regardless though, this festival is very important for the life of the church and for our spiritual lives. Now the Spirit of God is not something we should fear or something we should ignore. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is God's presence in the world. It is God's Spirit alive and well on this earth, working through His people to bring His love and power into the brokenness of this world. As Christians, we believe in the Trinity, which is God the Father who creates, God the Son who redeems, and God the Holy Spirit who gathers, calls, enlightens, sanctifies, and makes His people holy. God is one. However, at the same time, he shows himself in three different ways. And it is this third party of the Trinity, the, the third manifestation of God that we celebrate on the day of Pentecost. In our text for today, the context is the time right after the Last Supper and the washing of the disciples' feet. But before Jesus and his disciples walk over to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus talks about the Counselor coming to lead the disciples in truth and to convict, convict the world of sin and to bring God's righteousness into the lives of people. And this same Spirit is in each believer's life. This section of John's Gospel tells us how Jesus is continuing to prepare the disciples for his departure and for what would happen next. Jesus is saying that, that his departure should not be sorrowful, but rather will release a future blessing. A couple of chapters later, in uh, John's Gospel, in chapter 16, verse 7, Jesus says this, But I tell you the truth. It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And it is this comforter, the Holy Spirit, who is the interpreter of God to us and the one who brings God's peace to us. Jesus' parting words of the coming of the Spirit let us know he will be with us to lead us, guide us, and help us through our lives. So Jesus is telling the disciples that they should instead rejoice at this coming blessing rather than being sorrowful about their present loss. So in our Gospel text for today, we can see three characteristics of the promised Holy Spirit to come. The first characteristic of the Holy Spirit is that He is a teaching spirit. Three events were needed for the disciples to understand the true mission and purpose of Jesus. First, he had to die for them. Then, Jesus had to rise again to vindicate his claim and demonstrate his victory. And last, the Spirit had to come and interpret the meaning of Jesus' words and deeds. Jesus emphasized this teaching and prompting role of the Spirit in verse 26 of our text today, where it says, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, 
will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have told you, said to you. Jesus promised the disciples that the Holy Spirit would teach them and help them to remember his teachings. The Spirit would work within their hearts and minds to, to remind them of his teaching and give them insight into its meaning. The concept of remembering occurs throughout John's Gospel. However, during the, the ministry, the earthly ministry of Jesus, understanding was very difficult for the disciples. So Jesus now promises that the Holy Spirit will help the disciples recall the things he has done and said, and help them understand. The Greek word used here for counselor in verse 26 is the word parakletos, which means one who walks alongside. But there's more to this word than is first apparent. Back in verses 16 and 17, Jesus says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Spirit of truth. Now, the word is very important here. This word comes from the Greek word alos, which means another who is exactly the same. Jesus was promising the disciples that he, he himself, was coming back to be with them forever, but in a different form. The Holy Spirit can help us in the same way. The Holy Spirit and the Bible work together to give us the correct meanings for what Jesus did and said, and will reveal to us the correct applications as to what we should believe and do today in our own lives. As we study the Bible, we can trust the Spirit to implant the truth in our hearts and in our minds, to convince us of God's will and remind us when we stray. Note that Jesus says, and calls the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> the Greek word used for holy is the word hagios, which means to be set apart for God. So one of the purposes of the Holy Spirit is to set apart for God those who obey Him. Also note that the, the Father sent the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Verse 26 tells us, but the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. The Spirit of God's officially delegated representative who will act in Jesus' behalf will make him real to his followers. First characteristic, teaching spirit. The second characteristic of the Holy Spirit is that he is a spirit of peace. Verse 27 tells us of Jesus' gift of peace. Peace I live with you. Peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. In New Testament times, the normal way to say hello or goodbye was to say peace, which in the Hebrew language would be shalom. In his death, Jesus provided a legacy for his disciples. My peace I give to you. The kind of peace Jesus is talking about here is a peace with God. Romans chapter 5, verse 1 says this, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Also, Philippians chapter 4, verse 7 also gives us this promise. In the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Yeah. The disciples, and subsequently us, would have peace with God because their sins were forgiven. And he would continue to guard their lives. Jesus' shalom, his shalom, brings an end to the brokenness and separation that is caused by sin. Spirit of peace. But Jesus also says in the middle part of verse 27 that nothing in this world can offer such a gift. 
The false peace of the world comes from blinding us to our eternal peril of, uh, and our pride. Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 through 16, tells us that the peace of God even cancels a fear of death. It says that in these words. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. And because this characteristic of peace from Jesus and his Holy Spirit, verse 27 concludes with, do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. The ultimate outcome of the work of the Holy Spirit in our life is a deep and lasting peace. It is a shalom in the heart and mind which banishes anxiety and fear. And the spirit of peace can only come through the departure of Jesus by his death on the cross. A spirit of teaching and a spirit of peace. The third characteristic of the Holy Spirit from our text is that he is a spirit of rejoicing. Jesus prophecies his departure and the coming of the Spirit to encourage the disciples' faith. And he does this in verse 29 where he says, I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. Fulfilled prophecy is a great comfort and support to believers. Jesus had already predicted his death and resurrection many times. When Jesus' suffering and death came to pass, though, it shook the disciples' faith to their foundations. Yet after their initial shock, because of the fulfilled predictions and prophecies of Jesus, the faith of the disciples became stronger because they could trust their Lord and her more when they saw that his words were verified. So not only should the disciples and us rejoice with the fulfilled prophecies, but Jesus also says that we should rejoice because Satan has no hold or power over him. Jesus says in verse 30, I will not be with you or not, I will not speak with you much longer. For the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me. The reason for Jesus ceasing his teaching is the coming of Satan. His teaching time is becoming short because Satan, who is the prince of this world, was now moving his forces against Jesus through Judas Iscariot. However, Jesus did not fear Satan because Satan had no hold or claim on Jesus. Satan thought Jesus' death was a victory for him. Yet in reality, it was Jesus who was triumphant over Satan. As the Apostle Paul states in the first book of Corinthians, chapter 15, in verses 56 through 57, the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So if we love Jesus and obey his word, Satan will have no power over us either. Thanks be to God. And to have Jesus in our hearts is also to experience the Holy Spirit of teaching, peace, and rejoicing dwelling in each of us. And that is why we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit to teach us, give us peace, and to give and to rejoice in the saving grace of your Son Jesus when he sacrificed himself on the cross for our sins and defeated the prince of this world. Thanks be to God. We pray this in the holy name of your Son Jesus. Amen. Please rise as you are able for the Apostles. Let us all profess together the words of our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty.
and upon the chosen disciples. At this, the whole earth exults in boundless joy. And so, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy. Thank you. 
Thanks be to God. God.